Hey guys, it's Nicole and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you part two of my Hauserman haul update. I've had these orchids for about a year and I'm going to show you how they did in my care in the last 12 months. I'm going to show you some footage from before and after so you can get an idea more or less how long it takes for these guys to grow. If you guys like these kinds of videos, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more orchid content. With that said, let's jump right in. So the first orchid up is the Phalaenopsis hieroglyphica. This orchid has done really well. I have it set up in a uh, moss setup with some bark on top, and it's pushed out several different spikes since I got it a year ago. Now when I got it, it only had one spike that was starting up. So I was surprised to see that it now has about seven different spikes, eight different spikes. So it's been really, really nice. I'm looking forward for it to bloom because it just keeps pushing more and more spikes and it hasn't uh, bloomed this fall just yet. It bloomed uh, last November, but otherwise it's growing nicely. The root system is growing really well. As you can see, it's sort of growing through the pot. This is in the moss that I repotted it in last um, fall, but Overall, I'm very happy with this orchid. The blooms are very pretty. They're not fragrant, unfortunately, but they are beautiful. And I think when it blooms again, I'm going to get a very nice show. But this is the Phalaenopsis hieroglyphica. Next up, we've got the Brassavola digbiana, also known as the Rhincolalia digbiana. This is a species orchid that's growing incredibly well. Now, when I repotted this orchid, I thought that there were two different uh, orchids in the pot. Um, and as it continues to grow, I suspect that there's two different orchids. The roots were very tangled up and I didn't want to rip them apart, which is why I sort of kept it together. Otherwise, this orchid is growing really nicely in a semi-hydroponic setup. It's a self-watering setup, so it didn't have any issues in transitioning. The newer growths coming in are growing along the edges of the pot on both sides, and they are growing larger than the previous growths. When I got this orchid, it was advertised as three to four years from blooming. I'll say that it's growing incredibly nicely, but as I mentioned, I think it's two different orchids instead of one because it's growing sort of in a different pattern, and I think, it, I think it's just two different orchids. So when I repot this, which will be soon, I'll probably try to untangle those roots and um, give one away. But so far, this one's growing nicely. Hasn't bloomed yet, obviously, but let's give it some time, and it should be a good one. Moving on, we've got the Phalaenopsis violacea variation indigo. And this is a really nice orchid. It bloomed very soon after I got it. As you can see with the footage here, this was pretty small. It was advertised as one to two years from blooming. It bloomed about nine months into my care. With that said, it did get some spider mites, which I found interesting because Phalaenopsis, for me at least, don't usually get spider mites, but I treated it and they never came back. So I ended up repotting this orchid into a larger pot after it had its spider mites and after it bloomed. It's got some very, very beautiful blooms and it's given me about two or three different leaves. Each leaf is larger than the last and this orchid can bloom quite young. So I'm very happy with this one and it's been a wonderful addition to the collection. Up next, we have the Bellera Patricia McCulley Pacific Matriarch. As you can see from the, the video here, this orchid isn't the most vigorous orchid. I've had some issues with it where I had a bulb that I had to pull off because it rotted. When I pulled it, it looked a little purple, so I think it may have that dreaded uh, virus, but I've kept it either way. I keep it a little further from my other plants, um, but it's grown a lot of bulbs since I got it. Now the leaves are all messed up and it's very prone to spider mites. And I've gotten feedback from some growers that have this, that they found that this isn't a very strong orchid as well. So I'm curious to see how it, uh, how it grows and if it gets stronger. With that being said, it bloomed for me yesterday. So I'm gonna show you a picture of what those blooms look like right now. And you know, those blooms just blew me away. So I'm gonna hold on to this and see how it does and hope it gains some more strength. 
Moving on to the Phalaenopsis Sogo Vivian Leaf's Edge. This is a beautiful Phalaenopsis orchid. I have it potted up in semi-hydro. It's bloomed for me two different times. And when I got it, it came with a spike that broke, yet that spike branched off and started uh, growing some flowers. So that was really nice. It didn't have any issues with the transition at all. And um, it's doing pretty well. It's uh, actually in spike right now. I noticed a tiny little spike come up, but if we take a closer look at the root system, you'll see that there's some roots that live in the actual water reservoir and they're not dying off. I'm going to repot this into a bigger, uh, more suitable pot, but I had no issues with the transition here in the past year. And this is a really nice hybrid because of its variegated leaves. As you could see, there, there was very minimal dieback when I transitioned it. I was expecting more, but you could sort of see the new spike from there. So I'm looking forward to uh, getting this orchid to bloom again. This tends to give you a lot of blooms, and they're very pretty, as you could see from the picture. So I can't wait to see this again. It's a really nice one. Moving on to the next orchid, we've got the Neophenicia falcata. So when I got this orchid, it was actually in bloom. And if you guys can imagine, this orchid has been in bloom four times since then. So this orchid has bloomed four times in the past year since I've had it. So it's transitioned really well into semi-hydroponics, but I'll say it's been a year and I noticed that some of the roots have started dying off. So I need to repot this orchid very soon. I can tell that those roots died off because it used to be very uh, tight when I used to squeeze the pot. And then um, I just realized that it started give, having some give, if that makes sense. So I knew that those roots were now hollow instead of full. So I need to repot this really soon. This I'll say is a slow grower. It takes a while for these fans to come out and for these leaves to come out. For a vandaceous type orchid, it doesn't need too much light to bloom. And I find that the blooms have been very rewarding because they're very simple, yet they're extremely fragrant and they're really nice. So I've really enjoyed having this orchid in my collection and um, I've just been enjoying Neophenicia type orchids. I've gotten more. Next up, we've got the BL Yellowbird, and this one has been extremely vigorous. So this orchid transitioned into a self-watering semi-hydroponic setup with no issues whatsoever. I have noticed that it is very prone to anthocyanin. I'm giving it pretty moderate light. I've recently moved it towards Cattleya level lights, but I don't want to scorch it, so it took me some time to acclimate it to brighter light conditions. This orchid truly grows like a weed. As you can see, there's some roots that have popped out, so I need to repot it very soon. The pot is hard as a rock. There's no give when you squeeze it, so that uh, pot is full of roots. So I'm gonna have to clean it up a little bit and repot it into something larger. As you could see, there's roots that are actually hitting the water reservoir. Those roots are not dying. There's a little bit of algae sludge in there, which is a little gross, but that's the downside to growing in self-watering. You do get a little bit of that algae mess. This orchid did bloom for me a couple of months ago. I'll say it's a very pretty bloom, but I was a little bit disappointed because it wasn't very bright yellow. It was a very pale yellow. It started out like a pinkish kind of color, but Although it was really cute, it had no fragrance. And I keep hearing about people with this orchid and they say that it's very fragrant. I'm gonna give it another uh, bloom cycle to see if the fragrance shows up. It's a cute one, but I was really hoping for some fragrance here. Next up, we've got the Phalaenopsis Stars Fiona. So I bought this orchid on clearance. I think it was $5.99 when I got it. It had already had some um, some spikes on it that were cut off and I was told that it wouldn't bloom for a year. It actually ended up blooming that year, which was really nice and it gave me double spikes. But this orchid was one of the first orchids that I ever transitioned into a semi-hydroponic self-watering setup. It adapted very well and I've got this under pretty moderate lights. I don't keep my fowls under low lights. I put them in oncidium type lights because I find they do better but we had minimal die off on the roots. Some of the older ones started to die off and I'll take care of that in a couple of weeks with a little bit of a cleanup, but we have a new spike coming in. This is really, really healthy. And what I really liked about this orchid is, as I mentioned, 
Last year, it gave me double spikes. So I'm going to show you some pictures of when this orchid bloomed, but it was very rewarding because it was so easy to grow. The blooms lasted for four months, so it was really nice to see this one. It lasted all the way through the uh, beginning of spring, so it was really, really nice. Lots of blooms, medium-sized flowers. This is a nice, classic, easy-growing orchid that I recommend for anyone's collection. Next up, we've got the Phalaenopsis bellina. So I did a spotlight for this one with you guys, but unfortunately, I want to give an update. I accidentally left it near a radiator and it got burned. So although it's been growing incredibly well, it's lost all of its bottom leaves. So I'm really sad about that, but I think it'll recover. As you can see with the before and after photos, this orchid in one year has grown a ton. It's pushed out leaves that are larger than the next. I'm still so bummed with what I did. I didn't expect the radiator to come on that day and it did sustain some burns, but I think it just needs, uh, once it starts growing leaves, I think it'll be fine. Um, the bloom was gorgeous. The fragrance was fantastic. This bloom's very young. I highly recommend this orchid for any uh, orchid grower, even beginners, it's a good one. Next up, we've got the Zygopudlum Arthur L. York cross with the Blue Blazes Blue Plate Special. This is my very first Zygopudlum. When I got it, it was tiny. So as you can see, when you compare, there were two different bulbs <laughs> for this orchid, and now it's got several. And I had to repot it because the roots took over the uh, setup in the last pot, and I wanted to get it into a larger pot. It's growing really nicely. However, I've noticed that the outside leaves and some of the older ones are starting to spot and fall off. Now, I know this orchid likes adequate moisture, so I make sure that I'm watering it a couple of times per week. It does tend to dry out pretty quickly because it does have a lot of roots, but that's something that I'm watching out for. If you guys are good with zygos, let me know down in the comments below what you think. But otherwise, vegetatively, this is growing well. I'm getting new growths. The temperatures have come down, which is great for this orchid since it likes more intermediate temperatures. But... I'm not liking that some of the leaves are falling off. Hopefully that's just happening to the older leaves, but I'm monitoring this very, very closely. And that is my Hauserman one year update. If you guys like these kinds of videos, let me know down in the comments below. Personally, I find it helpful to see orchids that I have in my collection, especially when they're advertised as say like one to two years from blooming. I find it helpful when I can see someone that says that they bloomed it sooner or later. Or in the case of the Bellera, if it's a weak one, it's good to know that other people have the same experience and that you're not the only one. Well, anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a like. And I will talk to you guys next time. Bye, everyone.